And now, Updater Company presents Richard Diamond, Private Detective, written by Blake Edwards and transcribed by Fred Matzner, and generously supported by the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone. Tonight's episode, The Thomas Jason Case. Is uh, this the Diamond Detective Agency? Well, what does a sign on the door say? Well, uh, Diamond Detective Agency. Then take a guess. Are you Mr. Richard Diamond? That depends. How much does he owe you? Uh, why, nothing. You just want to speak to him? I do. You come as a client? Yes, I do. You have a hundred a day in expenses? Uh, I do. Then I now pronounce us man and client. Your name, please? Uh, my name's Thomas Jason. The stockbroker? Hey, you better pay cash. Oh, I'm retired, Mr. Diamond, and to end this nonsense, here's your hundred dollars. Oh, thank you. Now, what's the trouble? Uh, it's Carol, my adopted daughter. We adopted her when she was 12, but my wife died shortly after. Frankly, Carol has been trouble ever since. And now? Uh, now, uh, I'm afraid it's no longer a matter of delinquency. I, uh, yeah... Well, there have been several incidents that make me suspect she is trying to do away with me. Ah, sweet girl. What's her reason? Ah, my money. In my will, she is my only heir. Why not change the will? Ah, uh, uh, I said I suspected her. But I'm not certain, Mr. Diamond, and you understand. It would be terrible to disinherit her if I'm wrong about my suspicions. I... I, I simply must be sure before I change my will. she have any idea of your suspicions? Well, yes. Yes, this morning I did speak to her and mentioned the possibility of cutting her from my will. She flew into a rage, made several terrible threats. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, I... I want you to... Oh, uh, excuse me. Diamond Detective Agency, we have the only corpse with the lie-down design. Oh, Rick, why don't you answer the phone right? Okay, Helen, baby... Diamond Detective Agency, Mr. Richard Diamond speaking. What? See? Throws you. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Diamond? Uh, honey, I'll see you tonight. I got a client. She? He? Good. Bye. Uh, you were saying, Mr. Jason, before I was so, uh, nicely interrupted? Yes, I, I want you to either prove my fears to be true or groundless. If I am right, I will change my will, of course. Where do I start? Uh, come to my house at three this afternoon. Here's the address. Hmm. I will introduce you to my stepdaughter, Carol, as a, a business acquaintance. After you've met and talked with her, I'll give you what details I have about her threats and actions. Okay, Mr. Jason. I'll be at your place at three this afternoon. Uh, good day, Mr. Diamond. I checked the time and found it to be nearly twelve, so I beat it out to grab a bite of food before the noon rush began. Cafes on Upper Broadway at lunchtime can only be compared to a can of sardines after all their relatives move in. When I had downed my daily bread, I went back to the office, did a little washing, and found myself with still time to kill. So, being interested in my new client's problems and always liking a clear view of a new case, I dropped in at the 34th Precinct to see what my best friend Lieutenant Levinson had on the Jason family. When I walked into the squad room, I found Sergeant Otis tilted back in his chair with his number 14s crossed on the desk in front of him. From the sounds he was making, he was either sleeping or gargling with molasses. Sergeant Otis. Mm, boy, oh boy. Sergeant Otis. Oh, yeah. Otis, wake up! Uh, well, I was just reading the articles. Oh. It's you, Shamus. Patrol leader Diamond with his stout-hearted brownies who were shocked, shocked by your dreams. Shame on you. Hey, how'd you know I was dreaming about a dame? I peeked. Huh. You know, I think I'll tell Lieutenant Levinson you were sleeping on the job. What? No, please don't do that, Shamus. He'll stop me pounding a beat again. Please don't tell him. Well, maybe I'll let you off the hook. But only if you tell Walt we're pals. That might stop him from giving me the devil about ribbing you. Pals? You mean friends? Buddies. Oh, no, I couldn't stand it. 
Hello, Walt. Okay, so where's the body? No body. You lost one? Nah, you stop that. Well, get you all mad because I can't find a body for you. Oh, please, Rick. What do you want? I just wanted any dope you might have on the Thomas Jason family. Jason? Yeah, the broker. Oh, nothing on him, but mm. plenty on his stepdaughter, Carol. Like what? She's a regular. Usually D&D, drunk driving, disturbing the peace. You want to see the file? Yeah, it might be worth a look. Uh, have my pal Otis bring it in. Sure, I... Your what? My pal. What? You didn't know Otis and I are friends? <laughs> Is that why he tries to hide under the desk every time he sees you coming? Mm, call him in. See for yourself. You think I won't? Otis! Get the file on Carol Jason. Bring it in here. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant. <laughs> now we'll see. Friend. <laughs> That's a laugh. <laughs> it's a laugh yourself. You better be feeling good. Uh, what do you mean by that? You'll see. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant. Here's the file. I'll take it, Otis. Thank you very much. Sergeant Otis, you have an opportunity to do me a great favor. Please, and without profanity, tell me what you think of Rick. Oh, he's nice. What? You're turning blue, Walt. I'll turn blue if I want to. What did you do to Otis? Dope him? You heard him. He thinks I'm nice. We're pals, buddies. I heard him all right, but I wouldn't believe it on a stack of police manuals. Otis, I'll give you one chance. What's this all about? The shamus told you, Lieutenant. I think he's a swell egg. A great guy. Thank you, Otis, my friend. Always kidding, but a good pal. <laughs> Otis, do your feet ache? My feet? Why, no, Lieutenant. Well, they will. I'm sending you to a beat. A beat? Yes, in Yonkers. Oh, no. I went through the file on Carol Jason and found out Walt hadn't been kidding. She had been picked up for everything from kicking dogs to slugging her boyfriend with a champagne bottle. Real nice girl. I left Walt trying to third-degree the truth out of Otis and headed for what I hoped would be a nice, easy case. In a few minutes, I was in front of my client's house on a dead-end street on Park Terrace East. It turned out to be a modest little shack of some 30 rooms with a brownstone cover. I was ushered in to wait in the library for Thomas Jason, but I got a surprise. Mr. Diamond. Well, now I bet you're Carol. Your stepfather's told me so much about you. You're a friend you. of my stepfather's? Well, uh, you might say we have things in common. Where is he? I'm afraid you can't see him, Mr. Diamond. You see, he's become quite ill. Oh, ill? So quickly? I talked to him a few hours ago. He was about as sickly as Paul Bunyan. Mr. Diamond, will you please leave? Not until you tell me what happened to Jason, where he is, and why I can't see him. Get out. Do you hear me? Get out. Oh, put a cork in it, honey. Your father suspected trouble. Apparently, you came quicker than he thought. Me? I want to know all your widow's secrets. Just who are you? Policeman? Private policeman, dear. Your father hired me this morning. Well, I'm firing you this afternoon. Father's ill, and I will not allow him to be disturbed. He paid me for a day's work. Tomorrow you can fire me. Is he here? No. Now, will you get out, or do I call the real police? Oh, maybe you'd better, dear. There's a smell around here that isn't a room full of roses. <sighs> All right. If it's going to save trouble, I will tell you this much. Father had a serious mental condition. This afternoon, a couple of hours ago, he had an attack. I was forced to have him taken to a place where he could be treated properly. With what? Embalming fluid? Why are you insulting? Where was he taken? Who's the doctor? I think I've answered all the questions I need to, Mr. Diamond. My actions are entirely legal. If you persist in your insinuations, I shall see that your license is revoked and that you are charged with defamation of character. Oh, 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 get you. You've been reading up on law, and I bet I know why. All right, dear, I'll leave now. Go on, and don't come back. Temper, temper, temper. I'm going. But we'll see each other again. Uh, hello, Pop. You got a minute? Uh, yeah, yeah. Reckon so, mister. What's on your mind? Oh, questions. Uh, like how long you been out here mowing the lawn? Uh, most of the day. Why? Did you, uh, see Mr. Jason leave? Oh, uh, sure. He left in an ambulance. He did. He was wearing a funny white coat with the arms tied in the back. <laughs> oh, my. Fashion certainly has changed. You didn't notice any name on the ambulance, did you? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did, mister. Um, 
It was a silly name. Just just about the silliest I've ever heard of. Uh, the name, Pop. What was it? Oh, don't be in such a dang rush. It was a uh, home sweet home rest home. <laughs> Ain't that silly? I don't think my client agrees with you. If he was taken there for a rest, it may be a permanent one. Next stop, a drugstore with a phone book. Said book gave me an address, and I was soon in Riverdale and looking at something pretty swank in the way of nut houses. Home sweet home was two acres of lawn, trees, and a square white blockhouse, and all surrounded by 15 feet of spiked steel fencing. By this time, the setup was really beginning to smell, and I decided that maybe a shamus might not be welcome. I stood by the big gate debating how I could get in. The answer was simple. I rang the bell. It caused a huge character to appear, wearing a white jacket and with arms like hairy telephone poles. Yeah? What can I do for you, mister? Uh, let me in? Why? This is a rest home, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I want to rest. Oh, funny. Beat it. I want to speak to the doctor, King Kong. Is he in? Maybe. Maybe not. Who wants him? I do. Who are you? Uh, let's just say I'm a patient. You want to keep me out here dying of schizophrenia? Ah, uh, Dr. Torn is busy now. Come back later. Look, in one minute I start throwing fits. Think how that will ruin your trade. Yeah. Ah, uh, the doc wouldn't like that. Uh, maybe you'd better come in. Now that's right neighborly of a friend. Well, nice place. Yeah, for nuts. Please, patient, remember? So? If you're nuts, I should care. And if you ain't, why should you? Ah, that's a homey bit of philosophy. Tell me, what do you do here? Break skulls? What? I, I don't think I like you. I'm a nurse. What a shock this will be to Dr. Kildare. I don't know him. Yeah, you wouldn't. His noises are pretty. If he had to have you as a nurse, he'd quit medicine and take up playing the glockenspiel. Yeah, yeah, you're nuts. Wait here. I'll get the doc. Yes, nurse. Uh, Dr. Thorne, uh, you got a patient, I think. All right, Razo. I am Dr. Thorne, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, he's nuts, Doc. Be quiet, Brazo. Oh, he's right, Doc. I, I'm nuttier than a squirrel's hideout. Well, I'm afraid I can be of no assistance, Mr. Uh, promise you won't tell? It, I promise. I am Sherlock Holmes. What? H-O-L. I can spell... I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place, Mr. Holmes. This is a private sanitarium, and certain procedures must be followed. I have money, I can pay, and, and I want to stay here. But, Mr. Holmes, you must be examined by a doctor and committed by a relative. You're a doctor? Examine me. But you're a relative. You, you can't commit yourself. Why not? I demand my rights. Oh, this is preposterous. This is not a hotel. You can't just come in and register. Tell me, uh, who's your doctor? Where is your home? Now, look, look, uh, tell you what... You let me stay for the day, and I'll tell you who my doctor is. And if you don't let me stay, I'll tell everybody what a bad place you have. Uh, you, uh, you said something about having um, money. Just how much money? I got a mattress full. Can I stay? Perhaps it can be arranged. Though, of course, I must examine you. Of course. And there would be a certain, um, fee. You understand? Hmm, I'm beginning to. Tell me, Mr., uh... H-O-L. Stop. You certainly are most annoying. Tell me, why do you want to stay here anyway? Well, I've got to stop the plot. The plot? You know about that? Sure! You plan to rub out Fearless Fostic, but I'm not going to let you. Oh, I, I see. Tell me, uh, do you have any dreams? Well, of course. I have dreams about eating ice cream cones, and whoo, 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 what a mess they are. What's so messy about eating an ice cream cone? My mouth is always filled with BBs. BBs? For my air rifle, stupid. How else could I stand off the Indians? What, what, what Indians? Well, the Indians who want to steal my ice cream cones. Now, why would Indians want to steal your ice cream cones? Oh, they're mad about pistachio. You are crazy, aren't you? Brazo, take Mr. Uh... H-O-L. Oh, never mind. Take him to the observation room, Brazo. I don't have time for the examination now. Uh, wait, uh, can I be with the other patients? I get lonely. Later, later. Come on, Sherlock. This way. And now, this public service message from Up Thinner Company. 
There's a killer on the loose and it's in your city, Mr. Smith. And it's in your town, Ms. Johnson. It's on the street, it's in your supermarket, and yes, it's even in your playground. No, you can't see it, and that is what makes this killer so very dangerous. The worst part is that this killer is abetted by many of our own people. That's right. They may be your neighbors, your co-workers, they may even be members of your own family. Every man, woman, and child that does not wear a mask that covers their mouth and their nose is a partner to this fiendish virus. It's up to all of us to do our part. Wear your mask and wear it properly. Social distance even when outdoors. Wash your hands and whenever possible, urge others to do the same. Like it or not, we are all in this together. So wear your mask and wear it proudly. Richard Diamond does. It's the patriotic thing to do. Well, I was in, thanks to the good doctor not being able to pass up a possible easy buck. The big ape Brazo led me to a small room with bars on the window and a spring lock on the door. When he left, I made like a smart gumshoe and went after the lock with my penknife. Due to my early training in picking locks at the automat, I was out like a cello in a marching band. I found myself in a long hall with seven rooms, three on each side and one at the end. I knocked on every door, nothing. The last one had to be Jason. Are you in there, Mr. Jason? Diamond! Oh, I am glad to hear your voice. Please, get me out of here. Now, just take it easy. I don't have a key, and this door has a padlock on it. But you must get me out. Oh, sure, sure, but give me time. First, tell me what's the score. Why did they lock you up? Carol had it planned. She, she paid Dr. Thorne to keep me here until I go crazy. She wants to have me judged legally insane so she can take the estate. <sighs> yeah. Maybe I can put a few kinks in her plan. Wait, Diamond, where are you going? There's a phone in the doctor's office. If no one's there, I'll use it to get help. Yes, but what if you can't get to the phone? Then I go out and get the Marines. If I can get by that ape man and that locked gate, don't go away. Ah, there you are, Sherlock. Oh, don't tickle me. I, I was only three and a half years old. Oh, I'm upset with you, Sherlock. You oughtn't to be running around the halls like this, huh? Well, a guy's got to have his constitutional, Brazo. Yeah, well, you're true with yours. The doc wants to examine you now. Uh, I've uh, changed my mind. I, I don't like it here anymore. I said the doc wants you. What the doc wants, he gets. Well, bully for him, but this one time he won't. I'm leaving. I don't want to break your arm, Sherlock. No? So you don't leave until the doc says so. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint him, but certain things are necessary. Like this. Oh! Ah, oh. ah now you shouldn't act like that. I might get mad. Oh, oh, my knuckles. What's your jaw made of? Concrete? Uh, come on, Sherlock. Or do you want to try again? No, thanks. One busted hand is enough. And don't try to run. The gate is locked. And if I have to catch you, <laughs> I'll fix your legs so you can't run again. Oh, friendly little butcher, aren't you? No, right in here, Sherlock. The doc is waiting. Uh, he here he is, doc. Good. You can go back to the office, Brazo. I won't need you. Well, you seem to be well trained as a detective, Mr. Holmes. You always pick locks so easily. Uh, I do better with my erector set. Um, but you needn't examine me further. I've changed my mind. This is odd. First you demand in, now you want out? I just remembered. I, I forgot to pick up my station wagon. But the Indians, you want me to help you keep them from stealing your ice cream cones, don't you? Uh, well, they already got them. And all my money, too. <laughs> They're both gone. Your money? You don't have any money? Not a boulevard. Now, may I go, doctor? You're going to stay right here, Mr. Holmes. There's something peculiar about the way you've recovered from your illusions. Uh, Doc. Uh, yeah, Miss Jason to see you. She's in your office. Very well, Brazo. Stay here and guard this man, whoever he is. Uh, uh, Holmes, H-O-L. Will you shut up? And make sure he stays put this time, Brazo. I have some questions I want to ask him. <laughs> he won't go no place, Doc. You go ahead to the office. Well, Carol, this is a pleasant surprise. Come to visit Jason? Thorne, our plans will have to be changed. Changed? Something has come up that may cause an investigation of stepfather's illness. We can't afford to take a chance of that. But we can't let Jason go now. I have no such intentions. He must be taken care of tonight. Taken care of? 
But that's impossible. How could I... He must be gotten rid of. What? Oh, no. No, I didn't bargain for murder. Look, Thorn, you're in and you stay in. I paid you $10,000. Don't forget it. But why all this sudden rush to change our plan? Why can't we do it the way we... A private detective came to see me this morning. He, he was hired by Stepfather. I knew he had suspicions, but I didn't know they'd gone so far. A detective? Oh, he can't act legally, but he's the sort to cause trouble. A detective. Private detective. Sherlock Holmes! What are you rambling about? I'm afraid we're in serious trouble. Come with me. What? Your private detective? I think he's already found Jason. Come on. Uh, you wouldn't like to earn a hundred bucks, would you, Brazo? No. It is you, Diamond. Uh-oh. Fun's over. Thorn, you fool. How'd he get in here? He said he was a patient, Carol, and I swear he seemed crazy enough. He probably said he had money. Uh, you seem to understand each other, honey. But do you mind? I'd like to take Mr. Jason home now. A couple of extra dollars. You let him walk right in. Oh, Thorn, you're an idiot. I suppose you found Jason and talked to him. Well, he did get out of his room and wander about. Well, that's great. So now he knows the whole works. Ah, uh, too bad, baby. Your plan is kaput. <laughs> not quite, Diamond. You've just talked yourself into real trouble. This gun says for you not to get any bright ideas. My IQ just dropped 30 points. Shut him up, Brazo. Sure. Hey, now wait a minute. Oh! Oh! Now stay with him while Thorne and I make arrangements. We won't be long. <laughs> do I get to do the... Yes, Brazo, when we're ready. <laughs> Come on, Thorn. I want to talk to Stepfather. Brazo's fist was made of the same stuff as his jaw. By the time I came around, darkness had painted the window and the room was full of shadow. And Brasso, the big hulk, was squatting a few feet away, paying no attention to me. So I waited till my mind was clear while I eased off my right shoe. The heel was leather with a steel plate in it. I could only hope it was harder than Brazo's skull. With the shoe in my hand behind me, I was ready, only to have him catch me stirring. <laughs> Coming too, uh, Shamus. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, hand me my cigarettes, will you, Brazo? Oh, need a smoke? Huh? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, where are they? Fell out of my pocket. Uh, over there, behind you. Oh, okay. What? Where? I don't see them. Oh, say, that's not... <sighs> Need another? Oh, oh stop that! Ah, come on, Buster Fool! Oh. Oh. Well, is little old Brazo finally getting sleepy? <laughs> Happy New Year, Buster. Homicide. Walt, Rick, if you don't want me to be a customer of yours, get out to the home sweet home rest home fast. What? Hey, what kind of gag is this now? It's no gag, believe me. My client and I are the blue plate specials and dinner is about to be served. The home sweet? Oh, it still sounds like a gag. Who'd call anything that? Now don't argue, Walt. It's no joke. Okay, Rick, what's the address? 4900 Independence Avenue in Riverdale and bring a blowtorch to cut an iron gate. You may have to. Right. I'll be there in 30 minutes. Quicker if you can. Stand right there, Diamond, or I'll use this gun. Uh, good afternoon. I represent the Sleep Tight Mortuary. Put down that phone. Looks like I came just in time. But now that you've fixed Brazo, you'll have to dig your own grave. <laughs> dig my own grave? Oh, honey, is this trip really necessary? Keep moving, or I'll kill you right here. I, I, I move. Keep going. Over there, behind those trees where Thorne and Jason are. Oh. Is Jason... He's alive, but not for long. Where's Brazo? I thought he was going to... Diamond knocked him out. They can dig their own graves. There are the shovels. Get busy! Oh, uh, Carol, please. You may have the money. I swear, all you... Just shut up and dig! Carol, it's just absolutely... Just work the shovel! Can you imagine Richard Diamond, private detective, letting a sawed-off female make him dig his own grave? <laughs> you can't? 
Well, she did, and for a good half hour. I stalled as long as I could to give Walt Levinson a chance to get there. That's enough. I said that's deep enough. Oh, please, I, I just started. You're finished. Jason, get in that hole with him. Oh, very well. I guess this is it, Diamond. Sorry to have dragged you in. Well, it's a horrible way to say it. Don't we get time for a last cigarette? No. Thorn, take this gun. What? Oh, no. I'm not going to kill them. Shut up and take this gun. Don't do it, Thorn. Be a man about it. Here, Thorn. Don't be such a weakling. Two shots and it's over. No. It was your idea. I'm no murderer. Atta boy. Stick up for your rights. You shut up. Thorn, do you do the job or do I make you number three in that grave? You wouldn't dare. You you need me. Atta boy, Thorn. Tell her. Go on, Thorn. Take the gun. No, I can't. I just can't. Not like this. You weakling. I'll do it myself. Now turn around, Diamond. Oh, now look, baby. This thing's getting out of hand. You shoot me and the law will be all over the place. <laughs> Not until I fill that grave in over you. I called them, baby. Ha, you're lying. Am I? Well, just turn around and take a look at that lovely, big, fat policeman standing over there by that tree. You really don't expect me to fall for an old stunt like that? Well, if you don't, you'll fall for something. It's your funeral. No, it isn't. It's yours. All right, lady, drop it. What? Why, you? Smarty. I'll kill you anyway. Oh! Carol! Rick! Rick! What the devil is going on here? What are you doing down there? I'm looking at the girl. I, I think you shot her pretty bad. Who are these two guys? The guy with the castanet knees is Doc Thorne. Better put the cuffs on him as an accessory. But you can't do this. I was the one that refused to shoot you. Oh, stop licking my hand. You can tell it to the precinct judge. Otis, snap the cuffs on him. Take him out to the car. Sure. Come on, you. Well, what about this other guy? The girl's stepfather. How do you feel, Mr. Jason? Sick, Mr. Diamond. What about the girl, Rick? Should I call the ambulance? I don't know. Carol, Carol! Well, Rick? Ah, take your time, Walt. She's not with us. I gave Walt the story and then took Jason to his house. Stayed there long enough to brush the dirt off my clothes, wash my hands, and then I headed for a delayed date. At 600 West 218th Street, I found a big fireplace and a lovely redhead waiting for me. A redhead wearing a dress that was part green silk and part... I'm in the library, darling. Come on in. Oh, hello, Helen, baby. You sound like you found oil in the basement. What's with the cheer? Me? Isn't it always? I like you. Mm, I like the way you say that, looking up at me with those big green eyes. They're not green. They're hazel. Oh, are they? Hmm... Let me look closer. Uh, 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 not until you sing for me. Sing? Oh, honey, I'm tired. I want to rest. No, you don't. No, no. Over to the piano. Uh, now, Rick, not here. But, Helen, all I wanted to do is... Oh, I know. Ah, you've been using that Ouija board again. I don't want to sing. Want to look in my eyes? Close range. Contact. I'll sing. <laughs> That's better. Like, um, you must have been a beautiful baby. Oh, love it. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child. When you were only starting to go to kindergarten, I bet you drove the little Like that? That was wonderful, Rick. Come here. Mm. 
About time. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rick. Do you think you can do that and sing too? Honey, when you look at me like that, I could kiss you, sing, and knit a whole sweater at the same time. Oh, Rick, could you? you Want to try? A sweater will take years. I'll buy that. Come here. We'll start with the neck. Rick. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know something? Mm. What? I may knit you a whole suit. <laughs> You've just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, The Thomas Jason Case. Tonight's episode was directed by Gregory Wolf, with musical direction by Keith Burton. Richard Diamond was played by Rick Walter. Helen was played by Laura Foyce. Lieutenant Levinson by Jeff Ward. And Sergeant Otis by Ken Dillon. Also in our cast tonight, Joe Burby as Thomas Jason. Nina Mehta as Carol Jason. Martin Collins as Pop. Greg Wolf as Brazo. Stephen Martin as Dr. Thorne. And I'm your announcer, Martin Collins. Richard Diamond was produced by Up Theater Company with sound design by David Margolin Lawson. The public service message was written by James Bosley and performed by Peter Fleehan. Up Theater Company's programming is supported by the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the Miranda Family Fund, the Manhattan Borough President Community Award, and listeners like you. Thank you. Join us again when we bring you another adventure of Richard Diamond, Private Detective.